How's it going, Rogue Scout, and welcome to another MetaZoo video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we have our very first MetaZoo deck tech, kind of. I have built my three first, first three MetaZoo decks. They are really, really sweet. We got like a dark alien style deck, we have like a forest deck, and we have a flame deck. And I'm really excited to kind of like share with you what I've got going on. I did get some help from community members and I'll mention them when we actually get to the decks and I'll kind of tell you who gave me the ideas for which decks and all that kind of stuff. And then one of the decks I built completely from scratch um, by my own, my own madness. It, it's the forest deck, spoilers. I wanted to use my Bigfoot, dude. I live in Oregon. We got all these forests. I get like all of this, um, all of like the meta powers just by living in freaking Oregon. So yeah, we're gonna be doing some uh, MetaZoo decks today. It's really, really exciting. I wanted to actually get these lists out there before um, the first edition launched because first edition is launching very, very shortly. If you're watching this in the, the future, uh, maybe first edition is already out, but currently it's gonna be launching at the end of July, tentatively July 30th. And like I said, I'm super excited, man. I have a bunch of boxes of like five booster boxes. Um, several spell books and like two of all the, the, the decks coming just so I can build all the stuff that I want to build, play some MetaZoo and it's going to be a lot of fun, man. And I hope a lot of folks out there pick it up and play some MetaZoo because it's a, it's just a fun, goofy game, man. Aside from all of like the money and all that kind of stuff, it's just a really fun game. And, um, you know, I think it's cool, which is why I made some decks, which is why I took the time and made some decks. So if you'd like to support me and what I do here on the channel, definitely check out my Patreon. Um, I have some tiers there where I give like cards and booster packs on there. Let me know if you'd like MetaZoo added to any of those kind of things. Um, but any of the tiers will give you access to the Red Zone Row community discord where we talk about MetaZoo, Flesh and Blood, Magic the Gathering, video games, all sorts of stuff over there. It's a great time. So if you'd like to support me and um, you know join the community in a greater capacity, then go ahead and check it out. But Without further ado, let's get started with today's um, three, three MetaZoo, three for the price of one MetaZoo decks. Let's do it. All right, and here we have our very first MetaZoo decks. These three decks are the first decks that I have ever made, and um, I'm I'm really, really stoked for this. Um, I think this game, like I said at the, at the, in the intro, is just a ton of fun. It's kind of goofy, it's kind of silly, but man, it's just a lot of fun, and I, I was... Um, thinking about it, and I was like, you know what, let's just make some decks with the Kickstarter cards that I have. I was kind of going to wait until first edition, but I was like, you know what, let's just make some decks, man. Let's just make some decks. So, like I said, I reached out to some community members. I will have, like, an image on screen of uh, of who it is, because I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but thank you to them from the MetaZoo community Discord for giving me a couple of these deck ideas. And um, there's also a website that I went to, which I'll also link in the description down below that has some MetaZoo deck ideas as well. Um, the Discord's a great place, by the way, to just get deck ideas. So anyway, let's just, let's get this out of the way and let's just open up these and we'll talk about the decks. I have three distinct decks. I don't know which one this one is. It's gonna be kind of random which ones we do. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So this one, is kind of like a mid-range dark and cosmic deck. So it's basically like dark and alien. Um, the Jersey Devil here is one of the, the main cards in the deck. A lot of the cards have like a, you know, mid-range-ish cost, but um, I think this deck is actually quite good and probably one of my favorite decks. And just to know, uh, some of these decks, or one of these decks has just my standard dragon shield sleeves, but uh, some of them don't. I have a bunch of like these anime sleeves left over from, you know, covering uh, Wii Cross and a lot of anime games. And I was like, you know what? This one actually kind of fits this very perfectly. Fits it very perfectly. So we have the Jersey Devil here. I'm not gonna go over every card in detail, but I'll kind of like go over them just a bit, just a bit. Talk about some MetaZoo strategy. So Jersey Devil has an attack of five here with an on hit effect. I believe that is a fire effect, so it like burns them. Um, it also has flying. And then this uh, scary face here means when you play it, you, I can't remember if you flip a coin or you roll a dice, either way you randomly, um, you choose an opposing beastie and then you determine randomly if it gets bounced back to their hand. It's, it's afraid, man, it, it's afraid. Also, if it's nighttime, it gets plus 25 attack. And if you're in a forest, it gets plus 25 attack. So if it's nighttime and you're in a forest, it gets plus 50, so it gets up to um, 100. Also, when you play it, you, you take 50 damage unless you make a blood-curdling scream. <laughs> Most of the time, just make a SpongeBob scream, go, oh, I think that works, <laughs> I think that works. It also says reduce 
all damage to Jersey Devil, or reduce all damage Jersey Devil would take from attacks from other beasties to zero. So um, he can only be destroyed by like effects and spells and stuff, which is pretty good, man. Jersey Devil's really good. Um, next up, I have Uncle Sam. This is a card that I put into um, a couple of these decks, partially because I have multiples and partially because it's just a really good card. Um, it's just a colorless card, costs five to play. Um, has no kind of fourth wall effects here, but it does have one here. It says, this beastie enters the arena, awakened and gains unblockable when contracted if there's an American flag with an eyesight. So it basically has haste, so it can attack immediately, and is unblockable if you have an American flag with an eyesight. You can just whip out your phone, man. I don't know if you people want to rule this, how they want to rule it, but you just whip out your phone, just pull up an uh, American flag, and just set it on the battlefield when you play your Uncle Sam. It also has a Liberty Smash. Liberty Smash's damage is equal to 20 times the number of American citizen casters in this game. Well, most of the people I play against are American citizens, so it's gonna be 40. It's pretty good, right? 40, unblockable with haste, that's pretty good. Next up we have the Fresno Nightcrawlers. These cards are, these cards are really sweet. So it's a two cost card. Um, it has 50 attack, which is actually pretty good. Um, gets a plus 25 if you, uh, it's nighttime. It also has, um, Haste, basically, so it comes into play um, and, and, and it can attack immediately, basically, that's what it means. And then the little ghost symbol means, I'm pretty sure it means it can't be chosen as a target of an attack. It also says, the beastie cannot be contracted if you are wearing pants. Luckily, I'm wearing shorts today because it's very, very hot. It also says, when uh, Fresno Nightcrawls enters the arena, you may reveal any number of non-cosmic um, pages from your chapter, from your hand, um, and then shuffle them into your spellbook, your deck. Uh, you may then bookmark, draw, an equal number of pages from the top of your spellbook. That's pretty good, right? So if you have just a bunch of like other cards, a bunch of like dark cards in your hand, you can just put them in your spellbook and draw cards equal up. It's pretty sweet. It also has a tech, tech of 50. Um, yeah, we're running two of these because you can only have two in your deck. But we, we like the Nightcrawlers. We like the Nightcrawlers. Next up is Killer Clown. So this was in a list that I, I took it from the list, and I'm not actually sure why. It was in that list um, when I actually like read the card. I just put it in here anyway. I will probably be taking this out and putting in another card. So it's a one cost card with 40 attack. Um, it's a beastie humanoid killer clown. Um, it says balloon pop. Balloon pop gains plus 10 damage for each inflated balloon in the room. I guess if you just got a lot of balloons, you can do a lot of damage. It says during your turn, you may fatigue this beastie and place it in limbo to select another beastie from your limbo with total aura cost equal to or less than this beastie's total aura cost and put it into the arena. It only has an aura cost of one, so it really can't get back much in this deck. And the list that I looked had one of these, and I don't, I'm not sure why. I'm probably gonna cut this for another card. We'll set that aside. I'll show you what I'm gonna cut that for. Next up, we have Bunny Man. This is a two cost card, 50 health, has a 20 attack, but that is boosted by an additional 20 if you're within one mile of a human-made tunnel, and I think I am, actually. Um, it also has a 25 additional attack if it's nighttime, and it has the trap mechanic, which you can play it face down and then turn it up later for its cost. And it says, destroy this BC and place it in limbo to select another BC in limbo with blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing, same effect as Killer Clown, right? Except the Bunny Man can at least get back some other stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. We are running four Bunny Men. Four out of our five possible bunny man. So it's actually not too bad. It can attack for 40 plus another 25. So it can attack for 65 with only a cost of two. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. And then it has an ability to get other cards back like our space penguins. So Sp space penguins, it's a two cost card. It has a 10 attack, which is not great. It also has flying, which is pretty good. And it says when space penguins enters the arena, target caster must reveal a cosmic beastie in their hand or is dealt 50 damage. This is super good. It just, hey, take some 50 damage. So we are running two of the space penguins. Also, they look like alien hominids. They look like alien hominids. Next up, we have Moon-Eyed People. And this is the card that I'm probably just gonna add another one in, take out this killer clown, put in another Moon-Eyed People. So this is a one cost card, has 20 life, it's pretty low. Um, does an additional 50 damage if there's stars out and another 25 if it's nighttime. Um, and it says, this beastie can only be contracted if it is not a new moon tonight. It says, during your turn, you may fatigue moon-eyed people and place it in the afterlife to look at the top seven cards of your deck. Take one of them, you know, draw one, 
uh, and then shuffle your deck. This is pretty good. This is a really good card. It kind of like sacrifices itself to get us some card draw, maybe draw up our Jersey Devil. Um, I think it's just really good in general. It also has Moonbeam and it says, if an opposing page in combat is a beastie humanoid, it gains additional 10 damage. So eh, that's okay, that's all right. Um, we are running two Moon-Eyed people. Like I said, I'm probably gonna take out uh, this, this clown and put in another Moon-Eyed people. Because I think it's good. Next up we have the Enfield Monster. This is one of the higher cost cards in the deck. It costs four to play. Three Cosmic and one of any has 75 health, which is pretty good. It has Toe Gouge, which is a 40 attack, but it does dark damage, which is interesting. And it says, when Enfield Monster is in the arena, it must be chosen as the target of all effects, attacks, and pages that can legally target it. If there are multiple pages in the arena with this effect, any of them can be chosen as a target. This card is really sweet to have in conjunction with your heavy hitters like Uncle Sam and a Jersey Devil, especially if Uncle Sam is like unblockable. It's super good. So yeah, we are running three Enfield Monster. And it also kind of reminds me of a crazy Stitch, like from Lilo and Stitch, doesn't it? Kind of reminds me of that. Uh, but it is kind of like a top end card, you know, it costs four. Next up, we have a card that I put in literally every single one of these decks, partially because I got three of them, and also partially because it's an amazing card. This is Power Up Red. You can only have one in your deck, one per spell book. Costs three, and it says, place Power Up Red under target Beastie. While Power Up Red is under the Beastie, the Beastie um, loses and cannot gain Immortal, which that's okay, none of our guys can. It gains plus 100 life, and attacks gain plus 100 damage. If the, if the Beastie Power Up Red under would leave the arena, place Power Up Red in the cemetery. Um, that's quite sweet, dude. Just pumps up any of your beasties to absurd degrees. Put this on your Jersey Devil who can't be killed in combat and go to town. Next up, we have Death Beam. Um, the list actually called for more Death Beams, but I only have one. This is a three cost card and it says, target beastie is destroyed. Place the destroyed beastie into the afterlife instead of limbo or the cemetery. After resolving this page, you can no longer contract uh, light pages for the rest of the game. That's cool. We're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be death beaming them. If I had more, I would run it. Next up, we have Spellbook. One cost, draw two cards. Amazing. You put two of these in every single deck. Two per deck, put them in your decks. Next up is Broom. Broom is a one cost card. Um, it just says when it enters the arena, target a beastie. The chosen beastie has flying as long as the broom is in the arena. Basically, just gives one of your dudes flying. That's pretty good. You can have 10 per Spellbook. We are running two. Just give, give some dudes flying. Next up we have uh, Transfiguration. This is a three cost card. Pretty good card. It says target beastie, loses, target beastie loses all text, traits, and fourth wall symbols, recovers its maximum life point, and becomes a neutral beastie sheep with 10 max life points and 10 damage until the end of their next caster's turn. So this card's just a good way of killing off something, right? You can just make it small and just kill it. We are uh, running three of these. Next up we have some Proton Beams. This is a two cost card, cosmic and one of any. And it just says deal 25 damage to target beastie. If the chosen beastie is a ghost or dark, you may deal another 25 damage to another target beastie. You may target the same target as before. So that's pretty good, right? Um, you can actually transfigure, turn it into like a sheep and then blow it up and then blow it up. We are running three of these. We also are running two night times because we have so many beasties that benefit for you know it being nighttime. And then we just have our resource cards. We have your, uh, you're kind of like your Moxin, your Black Hole Shard. You have two per spell book, but I only own one, so we have one. Uh, Blood Ruby, same deal, but dark. I only have one, so we have one. And then we have some Cosmic Aura, and then some Dark Aura, and that's the deck. Re really interesting to note, the Brilliant Aura Cosmic Auras, you can tell by the star down here, doesn't have the symbol up here, but the Kickstarter ones do. But that's not consistent because this one is a Brilliant Aura one. Dark Aura has the symbol, and the Kickstarter one also has the symbol. So yeah, I think they just messed up on this one, but that's kind of a cool little cool little misprint. Um, so yeah, that was my alien, my dark alien deck. I kind of want to put Mothman in this, try with Mothman because I do have a Mothman and some chibi Mothman, but um, yeah, Jersey Devil's really good. Jersey Devil's really good. All right, next, next deck. Okay, so this is the one that I made myself. I made this one from scratch um, and I think this deck is really cool. This is a um, forest deck, basically. We're, we're rocking the forest. I live in Oregon. I really wanted to make a forest deck, you know, featuring Bigfoot here. And Bigfoot's really good, dude. And, you know, by, by virtue of living in Oregon, next, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Um, next to all these like forests and stuff, he's just gonna be super pumped up. So Bigfoot is a four cost beastie with a 50 attack um, that does like 
is that water damage or something? He does like some weird damage here. Um, you can also, this means you can um, exhaust the beastie and create a uh, aura of that type. So you can kind of like basically tap for mana. Um, he has a plus 25 attack if you are within a mile of a forest, and I definitely am. And it says, if you're within five miles of a forest, dude, I'm like within closer than that. Uh, Bigfoot gains um, invisibility, and I think this is like spell protection. So basically, it means he cannot be he cannot be defended against. He can't, cannot be targeted for spells. He cannot be targeted for attacks. Like. He's just insane. It's just, you know, take 75 damage a turn because you can't block him and you can't target him. It also has a power, King of the Apes, Fatigue or Awaken, one target Beastie Sasquatch. Well, this is the only Sasquatch in our deck, but he's super good. He's super good. Um, now we have the actual theme of the deck. I just had Bigfoot in here because Bigfoot's just super good. Um, you have Hodag. So Hodag is a Beastie Fearsome Critter, and that's kind of like the theme of this deck. We have a lot of Beastie Fury, some critters. He also costs five to play, which is a lot, but he has a really good ability. So he also heals one damage a turn or 10 life points a turn, which is really sweet. And uh, he says, power, great mimicry, can only be activated once per turn and does not fatigue Hodag when activated. Hodag gains attack power on target opposing Beastie. Hodag loses the chosen attack or power if the chosen Beastie or Hodag leaves the arena or if Hodag activates great mimicry again and it also says this page gains plus 10 life points and its attack gains plus 10 damage for every beastie fearsome critter in the arena and it itself is a beastie fearsome critter so it actually has uh 80 health there so he basically steals the attack of another opposing beastie so if you're playing opponent's playing mothman yo he's get that wing attack get that plus 100 damage um and then he also pumps himself up for each uh, beastie fearsome critters that you have and i have a lot of them this is a beastie fearsome critter deck Speaking of which, we have Gumbaru. Gumbaru is a one cost card, uh, 30 health, and uh, he's a beastie fearsome critter. He's a really funny card. It says, uh, reduce all combat damage Gumbaru would take to zero. But if Gumbaru takes fire damage or is inflicted with fire, it explodes and is placed in the afterlife and I take 50 damage. He also has a uh, tribal boost, which gains plus 10 life and plus 10 attack for each be uh, beastie fearsome critter. Um, we're just going to call that tribal boost from here on because I don't want to say it every single time, but for every beastie fearsome critter, they pump each other up with uh, life and attack, which is really, really good. And it says recoil. You may reduce recoil's damage to zero after applying additional effects to bounce send target opposing page in combat to their hand. Dude, Gumbaru is so good. Gumbaru is so good. He bounces dudes. Um, the only downside is he explodes if he takes fire damage, but dude, Gumbaru is super good. Um, we can have five Gumbaru. We are running four, possibly because I only own four Gumbaru. If I had five Gumbaru, I'd put another Gumbaru in. Gumbaru, it's all about Gumbaru, man. He's local. He's a local weird dude. He's a local weird dude. So Gumbaru is super good for just a one cost card. Um, yeah, yeah. So we're running a lot of, a lot of, gum, a lot of gums. Next up we have a Rump Diffusal. It's another one cost card. 20 life, but it also has um, that tribal boost ability. So it actually, if it's by itself, it has 30 life. And it says, if target caster is wearing a sweater or jacket of any kind, tight hug deals plus 50 damage and gains the, um, I think it's sleep ability. It gains this this, uh, this word keyword down here. And it says, uh, this page gains plus 10 life, well, it has a tribal boost, and then it has tight hug. So um, yeah, if they're wearing a sweater or jacket, it's gonna do a lot, lots more damage, but it's just that tribal boost, and we're gonna be doing a lot of cards. We wanna play a lot of these cards with tribal boost. So we're running two rump defusals. Next up, we have Squonk. Squonk is a one cost card with 30 life. Um, it has Drowning Sorrows, so attacks for 30. That's pretty good, actually. Um, it also has tribal boost. It is a fearsome uh, critter, beastie fearsome critter. And it says, if you are crying tears, Squonk is immortal. If an opposing caster cries tears, Squonk appreciates the sympathy and leaves the arena play squonk in the afterlife so you can cry man you can cry and squonk becomes immortal uh, but also just has that tribal boost okay there's another card with not tribal boost it's just really good so the two cost card one generic and one um uh, forest it also has regenerate which is really good and it has like the stone armor he's just a rock dude he's just a rock and can't take damage i think that that or can't take damage from spells but um, just know it's really resilient. It's very resilient. Uh, you can have three of these per spellbook, and I am running three of them. 
So he has 50 attack, so two cost 50 attack is actually pretty good. And it says, when while Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp is an attacker or defender, the effects of fourth wall symbols do not activate. So that's pretty good. If your opponent's running like a pretty heavy fourth wall symbol deck, and this, this deck kind of is actually, then uh, this uh, Lizard Man kind of counters it. So I'm running three of them. I think it's just a good cost, two cost card. Uh, next up we have Wildpaloozy, or Wapaloozy. We have Wapaloozy. There's a three cost card, so it's on the higher end of thing. It only has 40 life, but you can exhaust it to make some resources, which is pretty good. It has tribal boost, so it's a, if you're some critter. It has nibble, attack of 10, which isn't good, but it has, also has a fourth wall effect, which is pretty good. It says, if target caster is wearing leather, place a colorless beastie token with 10 life and 10 damage attack in the arena. Um, the beastie token can be named whatever you wish, and its name can trigger fourth wall effects. So, like, if someone's running Paul or running uh, Babe the Blue Ox, you can name it Paul Bunyan, that kind of stuff. But it's mostly just a beastie fearsome critter that makes another makes another dude. So we're just running around one of him because the the two cost there is a, is a lot. Next up, we have Hoop Snake. Hoop Snake is another card that costs kind of a lot, costs three to play, though it can generate resources and it does heal every single turn, which is pretty good. Um, it also has a rollout attack for 10 and it has tribal boost. It is a uh, fearsome critter and it says when your opponent contracts a spell that targets any of your pages, you may place a hoop snake in the cemetery and roll a dice. If the roll is equal to or greater than the aura cost of the contracted spell, you may choose a new target for the spell. That's so good. Hoop snake is super good. Um, we're only running two of them because it kind of costs a lot to play, but I really like hoop snake. Maybe I should put more hoop snakes in the deck. You can have four. I'm running two. Next up we have Joint Snake. We've got some snakes here. Uh, I really like Joint Snake as well. So it's a beastie fearsome critter. Um, it has poison, which is pretty good, and also can rest to, or exhaust to make resources. Um, it has Nibble. It's a beastie fearsome critter, but it does not have the tribal boost, right? It has Nibble. It says Fang Strike gains plus damage for every snake counter on this page. And it's kind of a complicated card, but, it, but it's pretty simple. Complicated when you look at the page, um, simple when you actually know what it does. So it's when you contract this beastie, choose an effect. Joint Snake enters the arena with X snake counters on it, where X is the number of forest used to contract it. This beastie's maximum life points is equal to 10 times the number of snake counters on it. Or you can place X forest beastie tokens with five life and five damage attack into the arena where X is equal to the number of forest used to contract this page. Place Joint Snake in limbo. So you can either make one big snake or a bunch of small snakes. I like making one big snake because it, when it makes the tokens, it doesn't make beastie fearsome critters, it just makes a beastie. If it made, made beastie fearsome critters, it would be amazing because then you would synergize with all of the tribal boost stuff. But just making a giant massive snake is pretty good. Pretty good. We are running three of these because they're just good and they, they scale really, really well and you can rest them for uh, resources. So it's great. Next up, we have one of the best cards in the deck, Growth. It's a two cost card, a spell. If there's a plant within arm's reach, you'll bring a plant along with you. Um, bookmark five pages from the top of your deck. You draw five cards. This card's amazing. Two cost card, draw five. Just put a plant nearby, dude. Just put a plant nearby. Next up we have bookmarks. Like I said, put these in all of your decks. We have thorned whip, our kind of damaging spell for the deck. It just cost one, it's a trap. And when it's flipped face up, deal 25 damage to a beastie or artifact. Pretty simple, right? We're running four of them. Next up, we have another Power Up Red. Like I said, I put this in every single deck because it's just so good. Uh, now we have Power Up Green. No Power Up Red, no Power Up Green. Power Up Green costs two to play, a uh, generic and uh, forest. And it says, target beast gains plus 25 life and attacks gain plus 25 damage. And it's got the swirly ability until end of turn. So we are running four of these, which is pretty good. You know, pump up a dude, do some damage. We, this, is, this is kind of like an aggro deck, right? And then the last non-resource card we have, I believe, yep is uh, Sam's Four Leaf Clover, kind of just for Hoop Snake, but not really. It costs two to play. And it says, when the Four Leaf Clover enters the arena, place four leaf counters on it. You may fatigue the Four Leaf Clover and remove a leaf counter um, at any time, even if it's not your turn, to choose the result of a coin flip or a dice. When uh, Sam's Four Leaf Clover has no leaf counters on it, place it in the afterlife. You, you just, you get to choose. Like you don't re-roll or reflip. you just choose what it is. That's amazing. That's so good. And it's not just for you. It just says the result of the next uh, coin flip or dice roll. I only put one on the deck because it's not really a proactive card, but 
It does synergize with our um, Hoop Snake, and it can also kind of screw over your opponent's stuff too, which is really good. Uh, and next up, we just have our resources. We have the Forest God's Amber, which is like the, the green Mox. I do have two of them, so I'm running both of them, and then we're just running all the Forest Oros. And that's that. That's this deck. It's kind of like a, a synergy deck. It's your beastie, your fearsome beastie um, deck, and uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Also, it lets me play Bigfoot. It'd be cool to make like a full-on Sasquatch deck, but I don't think there's enough support right now for that. Um, let's get these on screen, man. Let's get these on screen. And the final deck is probably your most simple deck possible, right? Um, and, oh yeah, this deck, by the way, was just in some Dragon Shields. This one is in, um, like I said, I had a bunch of extra anime sleeves. So it's actually in some Shadowverse sleeves. And I think it fits the theme of the deck. We got some fire going on here. And that's what this deck is. This is a aggro fire burn deck where the, the forest deck was about playing a bunch of beasties. This is about playing a bunch of quick beasties and also just burning your opponent out. So first up we have Piazza Bird. The three cost card. This card's sweet. One of my favorite cards in the whole game, by the way, both in artwork and just kind of in flavor. Three cost card. It has flying. It gains plus 50 if you're in a desert. I am not. It has Magma Blast, which it does like forest kind of damage and also causes a burn, which is interesting because um, I guess he's maybe found near forest or something. I don't know, but it does 75 damage, which is pretty good. The three cost 75 damage is actually quite good. And it says, if there is a fire within eyesight, Piazza Bird's attacks gain plus 50 damage. If you are in a desert and there's a fire, his attacks deal 175, which is gross. And then while Piazza Bird is in the arena, all fire spells cost one less to play. That's super good. Next up, we have Uncle Sam. This is the other deck that I put Uncle Sam in because he's just basically unblockable and he has haste and it's pretty good. So we put him in there. Okay, so here we go. We got some of the, the meat and potatoes of this deck. We got Giant Salamander. This is a one cost card with 50 health. If you're within uh, a mile of a forest, it gains plus 50, which I am, so that's pretty good. Uh, 25 attack here. And he has a uh, ability, it says Charred Trunk. Charred Trunk gains plus 25 damage if there is a felled tree within eyesight or if a forest beastie was placed into Limbo, the cemetery, or the afterlife within the last two turns. So kind of kind of counters the uh, the forest deck a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty good. It's pretty good. You can have five in your deck. We are running all five of the giant salamanders. It's just a one cost card with just good attack. Next up we have Lava Bear. Shout out to Temple of the Lava Bear. It's one of my favorite D&D &D sessions. This is a one cost card with 30 health. Um, it does plus 25 damage if you are on an island, which I'm not. It says Volcanic Spurt. If you are playing near a volcano, which I, oh, actually, I don't know. I should probably look it up. Oh wait. Where's Mount St. Helens? How far is Mount St. Helens away from here? Activate or, uh, or active or otherwise, Volcanic Spurt gains plus 125 damage and target opposing page in combat is inflicted with burn. Bro, that's so much. That's so much. Uh, combined with the island, man. I don't know. We have five and we're running the five, man. Um, yeah, I'll have to look up and see how close uh, Mount, St. Helen is, Mount St. Helens is because it's, uh, it's a volcano, man. Next, we have Power Bread. Like I said, I have three of these and I put one on every single deck. Next up, we have Phoenix Rain. This card is sweet, dude. So the three cost card, you can only have two in your book. And it says, deal 100 damage to all casters. All non-fire beasties and all non-water beasties in the arena are inflicted with burn. Well, guess what? All of our dudes are fire except for Uncle Sam. You're going to light your Uncle Sam on fire, but you're going to light everyone else on fire too. Next up, we have a Bookmark. Once again, just put Bookmark on all your decks because it's so good. We have Fireball, so it's a one cost card. Target Beastie Artifact or Caster is dealt 25 damage and inflicted with Fire. You can have 10 in your spell book. I actually only have four, so I'm running all four that I own. Next up is Dragon's Breath. This is a three cost card. It says, choose an effect, deal 100 damage to target caster, or pay an additional three fire to place all Terra Pages into the afterlife. Regardless of the chosen effect, Dragon's Breath deals 50 damage to you, place it into the afterlife after resolving its effects. So 100 damage to your opponent and 50 to you. It's kind of risky, but you just want to be burning them out, man. You just want to be burning them out. So we, I have uh, four of these in the deck. You can only have four in the deck. Honestly, I would probably cut some for more fireballs if I had more fireballs. But man, just 100 damage is so good. Next up, we have Lightning in a Bottle. This is a card that I think is just a straight up staple for MetaZoo. It's a zero cost card. It's technically a lightning card, but it costs zero, so you don't need any resources to play it. Um, you can have five in your spell book. I am playing all the ones that I own, so all four of the ones that I own. And it says, Awaken Target Beastie, and this Beastie gains First Strike until end of turn. 
So it basically just gives your dudes haste, which is insane, which is really good. So you just want to play your dudes, give them haste, and smash in, and then burn them out. That's that's what this deck wants to do. So we're running uh, four of these lightning in a bottle. And then after that, we just have our resources. I have two of the fire, like Moxen. Um, you know, these cost zero. You can fatigue it to generate two resources. So running both of the ones that I have, because you can only have two. And then just a bunch of Flame Auras. And that's that for my first three MetaZoo decks. I think my favorite deck out of all of these is probably the Dark Alien deck, because I mean, that's, that's my jam, man. Like the spookiness and all that kind of stuff. That's my jam. I really want to make like a, a dark spirit deck with like ghosts and stuff, but uh, I don't really have enough cards to do that yet, yet. When uh, first edition comes out, I, like I said, I'm buying, I think I have five boxes on pre-order, multiple um, spell books, all of the starter decks, like two of each of all the starter decks. So I'm going to be going into MetaZoo pretty hard, not just collecting and flipping and all that crap because I'm not a flipper. I'm not like a, a reseller or anything. I mean, I just want to play the game, which is why I built these decks, which is why I built these decks. Um, and I think it's just a lot of fun. Uncle Sam, get get in the deck, Uncle Sam. So yeah, let me know what you think of these decks. Um, and let me know what you think of MetaZoo. Um, are you excited about picking up MetaZoo? Do you already have some cards and are you playing? I'm very curious to know. Like I said, this is my first MetaZoo deck tech kind of thing on the channel. I wanted to kind of cover a bunch of different decks because it's, it's a brand new thing and a lot of people just see this game as um, an investment or as a collecting kind of thing. And I wanted to highlight like some of the, the gameplay aspects. You know, I do have this gameplay playmat. Let's zoom back out. I do have like this gameplay playmat, um, as you can see. And I want to I want to actually play with it, man. I want to actually play some MetaZoo. So uh, hopefully I can convince my partner or my brother or so, uh, some friend to play some MetaZoo in person with me. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, if you like what I do here, check out my Patreon. I have a bunch of tiers there where I give cards back to you as well as um, access to our community Discord. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you. Have a good one everyone, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>